Hello everyone, Daz here and welcome to another Slider Revolution tutorial video. In this one we're going to take a look at the two ways in which you can create a new module ready for you to start editing in the module editor. From the Slider Revolution dashboard, the two options you can see there are the new blank module option and the new module from template option. The new module from template option allows you to start with a pre-made module selected from one of Slider Revolution's hundreds of templates. This is easily the fastest way to get up and running with building a creative design. Templates are also a good way to experiment with using and learning about the module editor. The new blank module option allows you to create a design space with nothing in it except for the bare bones essential defaults. Start a new blank module if you want to design something from scratch. We'll look at how to create a module from a template shortly, but first, let's go through the process of creating a blank module from scratch. Start by clicking the new blank module button. You'll be prompted to choose between using a guide to help you configure your new module or to go in with default module settings. If you're happy with the defaults or if you feel you don't need any help with module configuration, click quit guide. But I'm going to click start guide so we can learn more about working through the configuration process. There are three pages of choices we have to go through in the starting guide. The good news is there's no need to worry about making the wrong choices here. You can always change any of these initial settings later if you need to. Here we have to choose the type of module we want to start with. A slider is a module type designed to transition between multiple slides, showing them off one at a time. These transitions can happen automatically and or you can set up navigation controls that a user has to click or drag between to view each slide. Choose the slider option if you want to create slideshow style content. A scene is a module with a single slide. Choose Scene if you want to create a single piece of content like a website header, a menu, an image or text content that you don't intend to transition away from. You can also stack Scene modules on top of each other to create full websites, which is pretty cool. Scene is the right choice if you want to add a single piece of content to any section of your site. A carousel is more or less the same as a slider, except rather than transitioning between multiple slides one at a time, it allows you to see more than one slide at a time. This can be a good choice if you'd like your visitors to be able to pan through your slideshows instead of flipping through them one at a time. I'm going to choose Scene, but again, just choose the module type that suits your design idea. Once you've made your choice, click the Next Step button. Here we have to make a choice on what size we want our module to be. Choose Auto if you want your module to fit itself to the width of the container you put it in on your site. For example, if you put it into a post on your WordPress site and your WordPress post is set to be a maximum of 800 pixels wide, then your module will expand its width to 800 pixels so that it fits the post. When it does this, it will also automatically adjust its height to maintain its original aspect ratio, so there's no need to worry about any of that. Auto is a good option to choose if you want the content of your module to match the content of the area on your site that you're going to put it into. Choose Full Width if you want your module to take up the full width of the browser viewport. If you put a full width module into an 800 pixel wide WordPress post for example, it will break out of the 800 pixel container and span the full browser view instead. With a full width module, the height is fixed by default, but there are options to manually change it to keep the original aspect ratio if you need to later on. Full Width is a good option to choose for large header or banner style content, or for product showcases on pages that you really want to stand out. Choose Full Screen if you want your module to span the full width and height of the browser viewport. Content in a full screen module won't lock the visitor out of being able to scroll up and down the page though, like a full screen YouTube video does. Instead, a full screen module expands your module to fill the browser by maintaining the module's initial width and height settings, but a visitor can easily read the rest of your site at will. Choose Full Screen if you want a big, strong visual presentation that fully captures the attention of a visitor. Full screen modules are often used for large presentations designed for when a visitor first lands on your site. Once you've made your selection, click Next Step. The final page of the setup guide asks you to decide how your module should handle the resizing of your content to accommodate each different visitor's unique browsing dimensions. The right selection here helps to ensure your creation will display exactly how you want it to regardless of screen size, such as whether your content gets viewed on a PC, a tablet, or a phone, and so on. Classic linear resizing is the simplest of the three options. If you want your module to maintain its aspect ratio and simply shrink or expand to fill your visitor's browser viewport size, this is the option to go with. 
That said, if a visitor views your module on a very small screen size, linear resizing will still shrink your content and maintain the aspect ratio, which may make some content on your layers more difficult to read on a small screen. Choose this option if you know your content looks good regardless of size. Simple content displays such as basic videos, images or audio are ideal with this setting. Choose Intelligent Inheriting if you want to make sure your content stays as large and visible as possible, even if the screen it's being viewed on is small. With Intelligent Inheriting set, Slider Revolution will automatically create four different sized versions of your module, each one adjusted to suit progressively smaller screen sizes. Just know that although this automated process will work for most of your content, you should expect to make some manual tweaks here and there to your layouts wherever you see something isn't displaying quite like you expected it to. Choosing manual custom sizes will activate four different sized versions of your module. This is very much like what you'd get if you chose Intelligent Inheriting, with the exception being it will be up to you to manually create your layouts for each of the four versions. Choose this option if you want to take a completely thorough approach to your work, such as when you want to be meticulous and specify the exact size and position of the content in your module's layouts per viewing screen size. Obviously this option gives you more work to do, but in the end it can make your content look the best regardless of where it is viewed. Once you've made your choice, click go to editor to start working with your chosen settings in the module editor. Let's now jump back to our main dashboard and look at the process of creating a module from a template. To view the available templates, click new module from template. This brings up a list of module templates in thumbnail form. You can page through them all by using the navigation tools on the bottom right of the screen. You can also specify how many template thumbnails you want to show on your page. Clicking all enables you to see them all on one long page. The menu on the left can help you narrow down your search by displaying certain types of modules only, such as slider modules or full website modules, and so on, which is handy if you have an idea of which type of module you're after. In the top right menu, you can see a star with favorites next to it. Clicking on this will toggle the view to show only those modules you've previously marked as your favorite. Modules can be marked as favorite by clicking on the star icon on their thumbnail. Clicking on the favorites menu item again will toggle the favorites view back off. Next to the favorites option is the sort by creation drop-down menu. Sort by creation allows you to sort your thumbnails from the newest template to the oldest. Creation ascending sorts your thumbnails from the oldest to the newest. Sort by title sorts your thumbnails numerically and then alphabetically. Title descending also sorts numerically and alphabetically, but in reverse. And if you know what you're looking for, you can search for the template name in the search module templates field. For example, if I search for travel, any template tagged with the term travel will be displayed. The bottom of each thumbnail tells you whether the contents of the template contain a single module, which you can identify by looking for this purple module flag, or whether or not the template contains multiple modules, which you can identify via this yellow packages flag. If you hover your mouse cursor over a template with a purple module flag, you'll see two icons, an eye icon for previewing the module and a plus icon for installing that module. If you hover over a template with a yellow package flag, you'll see the same two icons as a normal module template plus a third folder icon. Clicking on the folder icon will take you to a view of the contents of the package where you'll be able to see all the different modules that come with that package. You can install any one of these modules by itself or you can back out of the folder view by clicking the root breadcrumb trail icon and then install the whole package to get all of its contained modules in one hit, which is handy since packages usually contain various modules that are designed to seamlessly go together. Before choosing a template module, click on the eye icon to preview it. Once you've chosen the module template you'd like to work with, click the plus symbol. A panel displaying information about the module will appear and this will show you if there are any special requirements needed to use it. A green tick will denote where you meet the requirements of the template, and a red cross will indicate where additional action needs to be taken. If your Slider Revolution installation is up to date, you should have a green tick next to the version listed. If it is marked with a red cross, simply update the plugin from within your WordPress dashboard. Some modules require additional add-ons to function correctly. Any additional add-on required will also be listed in the requirements area, and it will also be marked with a green tick or red cross. Add-ons extend the functionality of Slider Revolution by adding new controls to the module editor that allow you to do extra things with your design. For example, a particle add-on can create effects such as falling snow, while the distortion add-on can create shimmering effects like simulating being underwater. Slider Revolution has many different add-ons that you can use. 
Any add-on that you require will be automatically installed with your template. However, you can install them manually if you wish, in which case you'll have to back out of the current installation process. Before you do that though, it's a good idea to note down the name of the template that you've selected to make it easier to find again later. In this example, I've chosen to install the Bubble Morph Hero module, which requires the Bubble Morph add-on to function. I can click the Install Template and Add-on button now if I wish, but instead I'll install the add-on manually just to show you how it's done. Click the X in the top right to close down the window and return to the main dashboard. Here you can see there is an Add-ons button. Click on it and you'll see a window showing which add-ons are available for you to install. Add-ons that are already installed will be in color, while those that are yet to be installed will be grayed out with a Not Installed flag in the top right corner of the icon. Look for the add-on you need. In our case, we know we need the Bubble Morph add-on. Clicking its icon will open an information window. Just like with installing a template, you can see here if the add-on has any dependent requirements. Assuming your Slider Revolution installation is up to date, you should be good to go though. So just click on the Install Add-on button. This will install the add-on and change the Install Add-on button to an Activate Add-on button. Click Activate Add-on and the add-on's icon will change to color with a blue enabled flag in the top right corner. Now we're good to go with installing the module template that required the add-on in the first place. Click the X in the top right corner to close down the add-on window. Now click the new module from template button once again. In the template gallery, find the template you wanted to originally install by searching for the template name that you noted down earlier. In our case, that was Bubble Morph Hero. Click the plus button to install. Now we can see we have two green ticks as we have the latest Slider Revolution version installed and the Bubble Morph add-on installed too. You can also see the blue installation button now simply reads Install Template. So now we're all good to click Install Template, which will install the template and return us to the main Slider Revolution dashboard. The most recently installed template will default to the front of the list of installed modules. You can see the Bubble Morph Hero has done that and is sitting right there. Hover over it and click the Edit icon. This will open the module template with the module editor. Now we're ready to start editing, which is something we'll dive into in the next video. Thanks for watching and enjoy using Slider Revolution. Start your Slider Revolution 6 experience now. The world's most powerful WordPress builder.